A very warm welcome to our online service this morning. We're delighted that you're able to join with us on the Sunday before Lent, when we reflect on the transfiguration of our Lord. As we worship this morning, we keep in our hearts and minds the people of the Ukraine. So we begin with a prayer for all those involved in the conflict. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of the Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let, Let us, us worship him together. together. The Lord is here. His Spirit is, is with us. And now our prayers of penitence. When Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. As he is pure, all who have grasped this hope make themselves pure. So let us confess our sins that mar his image in us. Your unfailing kindness, O Lord, is in the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, and your justice as the great deep. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the word of Christ dwell in you richly. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. We listen to today's readings. The first reading is from the second letter of St Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, beginning at the 12th verse. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness. Not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside but their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides, 
we refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory, and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of each heart be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The wicked and evil aggression and warmongering that we have witnessed by President Putin and his acolytes over the last four days casts a dark shadow over our world, our continent and today's worship. But as we shall explore the great narrative of the transfiguration of Christ which we have just heard in the Gospel reading, seems strangely relevant. I was confirmed in 1969 by Ian Ramsey, the then Bishop of Durham. Ian, not to be confused with his namesake, Michael Ramsey, was a quite remarkable man. He was pint-sized and known affectionately as our Diddy Bishop, a reference to the current popularity of the Canadian Ken Dodd and his Diddy men, the ones from Naughty Ash. But he was a preeminent theologian and philosopher and a man of remarkable energy and vitality. Sadly, that vitality led him to overwork and overcommit, which may have contributed to his untimely death. For Ramsey, the sheer immensity and reality of that love which is at the heart of all things and that we call God, meant that our poor words, our language to try to articulate and express that reality, are hopelessly inadequate. Our words so often limit and confine. They only get us a little way 
towards ultimate understanding. But, Ramsey taught, from time to time God in his grace grants us what he called a disclosure of God's utter reality. It's often these momentary and perhaps rare instances that we really touch the rock, that sustain us in all the ordinariness, ordinariness of Christian living and worship and amidst the pains and anguish of life. You may well be able to think of such moments in your own life when the presence, reality and love of God somehow became tangible. Those moments when we say, I don't only believe, I know. Perhaps for some at St Andrews, last Sunday's healing service might have been such a time of disclosure. If so, please do tell us. In this morning's Gospel, three disciples, Peter, James and John, had such a disclosure. They climbed a mountain, perhaps Mount Tabor, or I suspect more likely the massive Mount Hermon in the north of the Holy Land. And in the Bible, mountains are places of disclosure. And there on the mountain, the veil, which St Paul refers to in this morning's first reading, was drawn back. And those disciples received a disclosure of the divine glory of Jesus. His body was transfigured. His face, well, our English translations say it was changed, but the Greek text says it became other, as if something hidden was now manifested. His clothes became dazzling white as the manifestation that Jesus inhabits the true glory of God, that he is fully divine as well as fully human. Suddenly, either side of him, were Moses and Elijah, Moses the giver of the law, Elijah the greatest of the prophets. Here the law and the prophets, what we might call the Old Testament, witnesses to Jesus. And Luke says, amazingly, that they were talking together about his exodus, which he was yet to accomplish in Jerusalem. Here is a greater exodus than the one that happened under Moses, a greater act of deliverance that the cross would achieve. And as Peter blurts out his inarticulate longings to preserve the vision by building shrines, suddenly a cloud envelops them. Now, clouds in the Old Testament were a sign of what we call theophany, a disclosure of the presence of God. And mysteriously, the cloud both concealed and revealed. It shrouded the divine presence, but revealed the reality. For in the cloud, the voice of God was discerned. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Then suddenly the disclosure ended. Moses and Elijah, the cloud, the brightness disappeared. And Jesus was as he was before. Why was this disclosure given? I'd like you to notice the similarities between the story of the Transfiguration 
and the story of the cross. Jesus is transfigured on a mountain and he is betrayed on the Mount of Olives and dies on the hill of Calvary. Peter, James and John alone see his glory on the Mount of Transfiguration and they alone see his agony in Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives. Jesus is flanked by Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration and he is flanked by two thieves on Mount Calvary. The cloud envelops the disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration and there was darkness over the whole land on Good Friday. Jesus talks about his exodus on the first mount and accomplishes it on the second. It is as if somehow glory and suffering belong together. They intermingle with each other. The glory of God is seen truly on both mountains. And yet we are only allowed to see as much as we can bear. The cloud, the darkness, veils our faces from gazing too long on either mystery. But the disclosure is given. We are about to enter Lent this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. It is a day of corporate penitence for our own sins and for the sins of the human race. The invitation to us is to walk with Christ once again through his cross and passion in the hope of glory to come. Today's Gospel gives us a disclosure of that glory before the cross. And it reminds me of those times when God has touched my life with particular power and reality. One of those was when I knelt before Bishop Ian Ramsey at my confirmation. Something was given to me that night that has never left me. Another was one ordinary eight o'clock said communion in Durham Cathedral, when somehow, as I stood at the altar, I felt transported into another realm of reality. My words were praying the prose of the liturgy, but my heart and my mind were in the heavenlies as if I was disconnected from my physical self. Just occasionally I have felt holy fear and like Peter have spluttered out incoherent and silly human responses or trembled by being overwhelmed by such immensity, such all-encompassing love. But as we fast forward to Good Friday, I have also seen the glory of God sitting by the bedside of a dying parishioner. Or when the grace of forgiveness has healed a destructive sin, or when redemption songs have drowned out human inhumanity. I have seen the glory of God, even in the chilling darkness of a Friday afternoon, when all seemed lost and hopeless, as it must seem, 
for the people of the Ukraine. These disclosures teach us that even the deepest human suffering which we see exhibited in the cross of Christ, which we see when evil men destroy life and freedom and peace and hope, is not beyond transfiguration, that suffering and loss can and will be redeemed, and that evil, all evil, will be judged and punished. It is these exceptional experiences of disclosure that equip us for living in this uneasy and broken world. If the Christian life were all constant rupture or constant fear, we would be paralysed, unable to move because of the beauty of the rupture or the terror of the fear. But the fact is, even in the face of callous evil, we have a Christian life to live, a gospel to proclaim. There is work for us to do, prayers to be prayed, service to yield. So fortified by the gifts of word and sacrament that God in his graciousness gives to us. And as we approach the beginning of Lent, we pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us reflect on what we have heard, that God may speak to our hearts in the quietness. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. This morning we ask for your healing love and hope to be present with us. Lord of the world, look with favour on the nations of the world, scarred by hatred, strife and war. We pray particularly for the people of the Ukraine, faced with the horrors of warfare, for those already fleeing from their homes, the injured, the bereaved, for those fearing untold suffering ahead. We pray for the families and children who live in fear and terror of what might happen next. Lord, look with favour. Lord, Lord transfigure and heal. Lord of peace, we pray for all who take decisions across the world, asking that you would work in the hearts of world leaders and diplomats as they make decisions that affect so many, that you would move their hearts to peace instead of war. We pray for the people of Russia and their leaders too. We think of the Ukrainians and Russians who live in this country, their anxiety and fear for their relatives and friends, unable to help as they see the conflict unfolding on their television screens. We pray for God's Spirit to be present in the churches in the Ukraine and Russia. Lord, look with favour. Lord, Lord transfigure and, and heal. Lord of hope, strengthen us all to work with you to build justice and peace 
reconciliation and healing in our hearts and homes, in our streets, in all communities, neighbourhoods and nations. Bless all who live lives for peace and well-being of others and make their service fruitful. Lord, look with favour. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of healing, look with favour on those in need and distress, suffering as your Son has suffered, and waiting for the salvation that you promise. We pray in particular for all those across the world ill or injured, those on our bulletin prayer list who are ill. We pray too for those who need our prayers but have no one to pray for them. We pray for those who mourn at this time, particularly John as he mourns Demelda, and Karen and Andrew as they mourn Joan. May the day break and Christ the morning star bring them the light of his presence. Lord, look with favour. Lord, Lord transfigure, transfigure and, and heal. heal. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence through Christ our Lord. To him be praise, dominion and worship now and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service this morning. Our new Lent Holy Week and Easter booklet is now ready to be downloaded from the website, or a copy may be picked up from the back of church. If you feel that you would like to join us for in-person worship, we meet at 10am for communion on a Wednesday and a Sunday morning you would be most welcome. Church is open every day from 9.30 to 4.15. If you'd like to come in, light a candle, to pray, or to reflect in a quiet space, do come along. As we end our time of worship, we ask that we may all, wherever we are in the world, know the Lord's presence this coming week. By the appearance on earth of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, God, God has broken, broken the power of death and brought life and immortality to light. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For though darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the nations, the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. By the appearance on earth of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, God, God has broken the power of death and brought life and immortality to light. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill us with radiance and scatter the darkness from our path. Amen. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden our eyes and warm our heart. Amen. Amen. Christ, the day spring from on high, Draw near to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen.